Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today we're jumping into some new DIY projects that I'm so excited to share with you guys. I'm gonna show you guys how to dupe some expensive decor items. I think you guys are really gonna like the first project because we're going to be DIYing a light fixture that is super on trend right now. A lot of you were saying that the petal light fixture that I created previously is a little bit harder to recreate at home. So I'm gonna show you an alternative way to create a petal light and it's super easy. I actually will be using my Cricut machine for this project and Cricut is sponsoring today's video. I'm a longtime user and a huge Cricut fan and they actually gave me a discount code for you guys so make sure you stay tuned for that. Before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and now let's jump into the first project. Okay guys, so we're jumping right on in and we are doing that light fixture that I'm so excited to show you guys. I'm currently obsessed with flower petal lights and I think that's so perfect for spring, but here is a photo of the one that I'm talking about specifically for today's project. This light has been on my radar for quite a while, but it's also $728, which is basically the same price that I see everywhere else is being sold as well. It comes in so many different colors, so you can totally customize this. It kind of reminds me of the petal light that I made previously Obviously, but this one is just a lot more modern looking and also more streamlined. So as I was scrolling on Instagram, I saw a reel from Abbey Road Home. She recreated this light and it was seriously so easy and super genius to do. I will have her video linked down below so you guys can check it out, but I thought that this was such a genius way to recreate a petal light without a lot of effort. And I'm gonna make it super easy by using my Cricut. I think in her video, she actually used poster board, but for this project, I wanted to try using some craft foam. So I have a bunch of sheets right here and Cricut can cut so many different materials So it's really awesome that I'm able to work with things like paper vinyl and then also this foam If you're not familiar with Cricut, it is a DIYer's best friend I have my Cricut Explore 3 sitting right behind me and I just love the color of it It's so pretty to look at they have different models to choose from but essentially Cricut is a smart cutting machine It allows you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials So I love that I'm able to recreate something that is super expensive and do it for a lot cheaper at home. It works with a software called Design Space and that comes free with your machine. This is where you can create your projects and browse from hundreds of images and fonts and different project ideas. And once you've created your design, Design Space will send it to your machine to cut and do all the magic. I know a lot of you guys out there are Cricut lovers and I'm so happy to share that they gave me a 10% off discount code. This will save you guys an extra 10% off of machine and material bundles and it also works through the end of June. So I'll have all that info down below for you guys. And of course, I will also link my machine and all the materials that I use for today's projects. And with that being said, I'm ready to start making this light. So let's get going. Okay, so I have my design space pulled up here and I'm going to start a new project. And this is super simple because all we're going to do is go into their little shapes library over here and then scroll down and they do have a raindrop one. And for this design, we're actually gonna cut off the top tip of that. So what I'm going to do is just add in a square shape right on top. I'll make that also a different color so you guys can see that better. I'm just going to cover that tip a little bit. Then you basically wanna select both of the shapes and then go to the slice button right here. And this is basically going to cut up all the different overlapping shapes. So now that you move it over, you'll see all of the different shapes over here. And all we really need is the teardrop with that line on the top. The foam I'm using is nine inches across, so I'm just gonna make that eight inches to be safe. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click make it. And of course, we're going to put this onto a mat. I'm gonna connect it to my Cricut over there and then we can cut and then put it all together. Okay, so now all I have to do is just lift this off and we have a perfect shape. This looks so good. Ah! I'm 
I'm gonna cut out seven more of these and that way when we put them together, it's gonna make the beautiful floral shape. I decided to use foam for this project because it's very flexible, making it perfect to create those curved petals. And it also has some thickness to it, making it look a little bit more luxe than using paper. And I also love that you can paint it or even add fabric on top for some texture and pattern. Everything is perfectly cut out and uniform, and I actually went with a little bit of a smaller size because I realized the eight inch one would be really large. So I went down to seven inches, and I think this is gonna be a lot better of a fit. And now what we need to do is to assemble them all together. I have my hot glue gun here, so we're going to run some glue along this edge and then just put it all together. This is dry now, I'm going to open it and ta-da! They are attached perfectly and when we start building this, it's gonna be more of that curved shape, if you can see right there. Oh, it's so cute! You can see here that I'm adding glue just along one edge up until it gets to that curved part of the petal. And you really don't need a ton of glue here to secure it, you just wanna match up the edges again and then just sandwich it on top. And I just made sure to hold it in place until it cooled down completely before moving on to the next one. I cut out eight of these petals, but I only ended up using seven of them, and this worked well just to make sure that the hole was gonna be big enough for the light kit that I'll be using. Okay guys, moment of truth. We're gonna flip this inside out. <gasps> oh my God, it's so cool. Look at it. I love it. So to actually hang this up, I do have an Ikea light kit right here. So all we have to do is to remove this part right here. And then I'm just going to insert that into the top. And this does fit really perfectly, so that's really good. And then you want to insert that back part back underneath. And then you can also pop in your light bulb and this should be good to go. Okay, how magical does this look? I think it looks so cute. I'm gonna go hang this up somewhere, style it, and then reveal it to you guys. This light is super on trend and looks amazing in any space. You can customize it to make it in any size and color you want. And in total, I spent $10 for the light kit and only $1 per sheet of foam, making this a $17 petal light, which is super affordable in comparison to the original, which was over $700. All right, so moving on to the next project. This is inspired by a piece that I saw on Urban Outfitters. It essentially is a piece of wood that's cut into a really beautiful design. This piece is actually carved with wood and I think that looks really beautiful. However, it is a little bit harder to DIY, so I wanna show you guys an easier way to get the look without having to spend a lot of money on carving tools and also a lot of time. So I grabbed a piece of pine from the hardware store. This was probably 12, 13, 14 bucks, I don't really remember, but I'll put the number right here on the screen. And I'll probably have to find a bowl so then we could start making the design. Luckily, I found a bowl that was about the same width as my board, which is around 11 inches. So I'm using that to trace out a half circle at five and a half inches from the edge. Then for the middle, we're gonna trace around the whole circle. And then on the other side, we're gonna go in again with another half circle. With a scroll blade in my jigsaw, I'm going to cut out the entire piece. And since the design touched the edges of the wood, this made it super easy just to cut out these little curved triangle pieces. I'm finding my jigsaw to be such a handy tool to have, especially when it comes to cutting out curves and circles. I honestly wish I picked one up sooner because I feel like I've been doing so many more projects with my jigsaw. This is definitely a must have for any beginner DIYer and I will have it linked down below as well as all the materials that I'm using. Sanding is a super important step, especially when you have rounded edges like this. It just helps fine tune all the curves and makes it look so much more smooth and more finished. And now it is time for some stain. So the original had a darker wood tone. So I just went with special walnut for mine. This color ended up being really perfect and I only needed one coat. 
So it's the next day now and you guys look at how good this came out. I love the color on it. I feel like the stain really brought out the wood tones so nicely and now we're ready to add on the design. So I'm going to use my Cricut for this. I'm planning to create out the design to a T so that it fits this board perfectly. And I'll be using white vinyl to really make a contrast between the wood tones and the design. I think it's gonna look so good. I have it ready to go and I put it right on top just to see what it would look like and I think it's going to be perfect. Ah! So now I just have to transfer it on top and that should be pretty easy. I just want to make sure that it's nice and centered here. And now all you have to do is just to burnish it on and I'm going in a radial pattern here just to make sure that it gets on there nice and smooth. so cool I'm gonna set up my camera so you guys can see all right time to peel it off and I always go super slow during this step but so far so good oh this looks so cool do you guys hear that rain outside oh my god This is turning out so well, and now all I have to do is the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut out the same design and then just basically cut it in half and then fit it onto both sides. Using vinyl made this project come together so quick and easy. I definitely did consider carving the wood, but since I'm using a pine board, this is definitely not the best for carving out curved edges, which this design definitely has a lot of. So I love that I'm able to get the same look without having to spend a lot of time to get it. And that's definitely something that I learned from DIYing so many projects. You don't always have to do it exactly how the original was. As long as you're able to get the look at your own skill set and you love it, that's all that matters. This piece is so unique and definitely makes a statement and I love the contrast between the wood tones and the line design. I just think it's so striking. It looks good hung up or leaning against a wall and I love that we were able to make this on a budget for under $25. Okay, so we're moving on to the next project, which is a wall art print. This piece is inspired by a super pricey one that I've seen on William Sonoma. I love the bold contrast of it, and you can buy it in a set of two to create a diptych. These paintings are quite large and also come with a large price tag at $4,000 for the pair. And today I'm going to recreate the Bold Sweep one. And looking at it on photos, it looks pretty flat, so I wanna make this something that has a little bit more texture and more 3D. So that's what we're gonna paint today. We're also gonna make a DIY frame for it and that's gonna cost us a lot less than two thousand dollars texture is the name of the game when it comes to creating a high-end look with diy artwork so the first thing i like to do is to add my gesso with a palette knife this is going to be the base of our piece and will allow us to build upon it there really is no right or wrong way to spread this on there i kind of just put it on there randomly and try to make it look as organic as possible once that's dry, I'm using this color called Dark Titanium White, which is actually more of a warm, peachy color. I wanted to go for something warmer than the original, which is more of a cool toned gray. And again, we want to add movement and layers by brushing it on in every direction. After that layer, I went in with my palette knife again, and I used this to spread the paint to add more texture. This will give even just a plain background like this some interest and dimension. This really makes a difference when you want to create abstract art and give it some life. Now it's time to move on to the sweeps of this bold sweep painting. So I'm mixing in joint compound with my acrylic paint to thicken it up and again add more texture. 
To create those broad strokes, I'm actually using a big house paintbrush, and this is going to be really key for this style. Using the original as a reference, I just freehanded the design onto the canvas. And as you can see, the joint compound is really working well to add some layers to this. And remember back in high school art class, we would use modeling paste and other fancy media to add to our paint. And these can definitely get pretty pricey, so I'm really glad that the DIY community has come up with an affordable way to get those same textures at an affordable price. I went back and forth between a smaller brush and a bigger brush just to make sure that I get those brush strokes and that you can really see the dimension in each one. Painting is a really therapeutic process for me and I'm so happy to see your recreations when you guys send me them. So thank you for allowing me to inspire you to let loose and get some paint onto a canvas and create something fun and stylish for your home. To finish off the painting, I wanted to clean the uneven edges so I just used the same background color and a smaller brush to touch it up. While that's drying, I went ahead and made a frame for the canvas, and this is super easy to do by just cutting 45 degree angles with some scrap wood. I had a ton laying around, so this was a great way to reuse it, and if you guys would like to see a more detailed tutorial on how you can DIY this, I did make a video about this previously, and I will link that down below. The painting is dry, and I think it looks really amazing. The texture just turned out so good. And now all we have to do is to frame it. I have all my frame pieces here, so we just have to brand nail it in, and this piece is going to be ready. Glasses on. I am loving how this came out. I think the black frame complements this piece so well. It totally looks way more expensive than it actually is with all the layers and movement and of course the texture that's on there. This piece is definitely bold and makes for a great statement piece in any room. All right guys, so those are all the projects from today's video. Let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite. I seriously can't choose one from the bunch because I think they all came out so good and I also have styled them in the background. I think they look so cute. And again, a big thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out my discount code down below so you can get 10% off. If you'd like to see more from me, you can follow me over on Instagram. I post on there every single day and that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.